Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farmville. Why is he ejected out the... There wasn't a bail on... Oh, I know why. Because I reduced the size of the bales coming out of it. And then I left it with the reduced size. That one bale there is going to have an odd... No, that's exactly 5,000 litres. Okay, I don't know why that's exactly 5,000 litres. I feel like maybe we've either lost a little bit or we've gained a little bit somewhere. But honestly, it doesn't really matter. We'll just chuck that one in there. And yes, I know I should probably have gone and gotten the loader. But that one technically shouldn't have been there in the first place. So I'm okay with doing that. Right. Anyway, let's get the tanker on here. We will take a load of slurry. Then we'll come back, we'll get the trailer, we'll take a load of manure over as well, and that's the BGA dealt with. We don't need to worry about that one again. So we've got 16,500 litres here. We can take. How much have we actually got? I think we've got about 20,000 litres in here. Let's bring you over there and load you up. And while you're loading, let me have a look, double check. Uh, slurry, 9,000 on there. Yeah, okay, we're about 20,000 litres. The manure in here, well, it doesn't actually show there. You've got to go and have a look at the other bit. Oh, wait, doesn't it do it on the farm storage bit? Let's turn the beacons on. I'm really sorry, traffic. I had, I had an important thing I had to attend to, as in my bank account. That's, that's why I had to barge in front of you like that, because I had to attend to my bank account. Let's bring you in over here and unload oh yeah it's a bit slow unloading this one is isn't it um if i go there manure right there we've got 7312 liters maximum price 109 for each of those the digest date right there at the moment the value it, that in january is when you expect to roughly get the most and we've got 900 euros worth there and we're gonna just sell that over at the sell everything container Huh. It's full. 30,000 litres. And I cannot put in any more. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to leave the... No, I'm not. I'm going to take the tanker back. Because we don't actually use the tanker for anything else. So I'll take that 3,000 litres and put it back over there. Still undecided. I probably will end up selling those. I can't see me making silage in this series. I can't see me doing it. It's a long, drawn-out process, and I did that just in the very last series. So, um, yeah, we'll probably leave that. Let's bring you back over this way. Wait, did that say... Oh! Start overloading slurry. It would be because... I think... Uh, putting it into that tanker so I could push it across into that tanker if I wanted to. I don't actually want to. That's, that's not going to be very useful. Let's get the time going a bit faster now. We've got up to 15 times just until we've got um, the the rain stopped. I can take you in the meantime and go and get a little bit of manure for the BGA. And, ooh, how much straw have we got? I didn't actually check that. How much straw have the cows got? Uh, they're pretty full on straw as well. We will take a few bales out we'll probably do that next month though rather than doing it this month one thing that i would like to do is have a way in round the back i wonder if we can do that like if we could have our track over here like where's the where's my mouse oh there right okay uh, if we could have we've got these three right here we're possibly going to get rid of those. Probably going to get rid of those. And we put like a mini BGA over this side. So I would say we'd want to be able to get in here about there. So can I sell? <gasps> yes, I can. Right. Brilliant. I really like that we've got... Uh, one thing that really bugs me on a map is when they've put fences everywhere and you can't sell them. I find that to be somewhat of a jolly nuisance. So I'm going to get rid of those. Let me just do a little bit of track and stuff here a minute. Alrighty then. So we've now got 
a new entrance into this one around the back, which is going to be a lot easier. If we can just go in the rear entrance each time, we're not having to fight the traffic over there on the road, which is going to make things a whole lot easier for us. So we'll bring you back there like that. Tip that lot out. That means we've got two lots in here. That one's completely full, just about. And this one... Can you only have seven? Okay. I didn't realize that you could only put like 7,000 liters in here. We need more than that. We definitely are going to want more. Like I got... I can't do this. I got a harvest I got to do in a minute. I didn't even realize. I thought it was 30,000, the same as the slurry. This this is no good at all. What am I going to do with that? I'm stuck now. Okay, I have decided I'm going to buy a mini BGA. I'm going to do it already. So I'm going to go into here. We're going to sell these three. They're going to go. So there's 44,000 for that one. Wait, what? Let's just... Let me sell it. Why can't I sell it? Demolish. It's not let... Wait, what? Don't do this to me. You're all promises just now. Why can't I sell you? Open objects. I need to be... I, I need to get rid of it. I absolutely need to get rid of this thing. I can't leave... I can't leave this here. It cannot stay here. This this is no good. I... No! Don't do this. No, 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 no. Um, because I've got... I can I can sell this one. See, I can sell that one for 320,000. So why can't I sell this one? This, that, that's, that's not fair. How is it even possible that it's done? Oh, ooh, I wonder. Um... If we go here and we go to farmland. No, it's not that. I own the land. I wondered if maybe it was because I didn't uh, I didn't own the land or something. But no, I own all of that. That's all mine. Okay, it's one of the jolly mysteries of life. So a mini BGA is 55,000. And... We can't sell off the bunkers, but if I plonk this one in here, I'm hoping that we should be able to start earning back some of the money because we'll have two BGAs running at once. So I'm going to try it out and see what happens. Plonk that one in there. I'm not actually going to need to... I won't worry about painting that at the back. That's just like gravel that has come up, so we'll leave it like that. We've only got 2,500 left now, but I'm okay with that. So if we take a look now and see what this one's got to offer, we've got the biogas plant there, which is the, the one that we've got. Mini biogas plant over here. So I've got silage. This holds an awful lot more. 2,400 cycles. Okay. When I was warned that this one may be a little bit overpowered, they weren't kidding. So we can put potatoes. We can also put straw in here and turn that direct into um, power and stuff. So I'm not sure if we'll use the straw on this one. I'll be honest, the straw option on this feels a little bit cheaty. Um, the other items on here seem reasonable. That's a lot of silage it can use up. The other items do seem reasonable, and we've got plenty of storage space for them. The straw one... So if we put in slurry, we get 180 on electricity, plus the methane, and then we get 60 of the um, digestate coming out. Manure, we get the same. Straw, 840. Oh, we get less... We do get less of each one. 840 straws has got to go through to do that. We'd actually be better off putting the straw through the cows like we're doing at the moment and turning it into manure and um, 
well, just, just turning it into manure. So we'll try that. So we'll see how this works out. I can't go and sell those, which means that we didn't get any extra money that we could have used. It would have been handy if we could have. Oh, by the way, it stopped raining while I was looking around trying to decide what to do there. Um, I've put the time scale back down um, so that we've got time to go and do our harvesting, should we want to. Now, the big question, can I take this back this way and just tip? Yes, I can. Right, brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. We can tip that straight in there. That is brilliant. So I have now got 1,696 for the manure in there. I'm going to activate that one. That was now running. It does 2,400 cycles a month, which means it should tip through this pretty quickly. At the moment, I've got outgoing products, electrical, electric charge, spawn. These all spawn. I don't want to spawn these. I'm not sure how much methane we get, but I, I want to just change the output mode to selling, distributing, spawn. We'll go to selling on that. We'll go to selling on that one, and we'll go to selling. No, we won't sell the di digestate. That one can just spawn. That will just be put into the tank. The electric charge, that one will go to what it's doing at the moment and this one here the electric charge and the methane you don't get an option to take those out anywhere so that's just going to sell what that should do is that it should sell it on the hour every hour much the same as this one does over here but we'll kind of just wait and see how that goes now the BGA plant there, they're really good, the, the, the folk there that, that run in place. We've also got grass here that is ready to harvest. The BGA people are really good. They will... Actually, I'm going to need this one back here, so I'm out of the way of that header. Um, they wash out your trailer for you when, when you've gone and tipped, so we don't need to worry. That's why we're not worrying about that, because they've gone and done it for us. Okay, combine. Let's take this one down to the field, and then I can get the header hooked on. We've got a little bit of canola there that we want to run through. The canola, we're not actually going to do anything with that other than bring it back and put it in storage and hold it until the winter. And then the um, sorghum that we've got down in the other field, that will be taken straight to the mill and be turned into flour. So not only are we going to want to do our harvesting this month, we're going to... Right, we've got several things that we're going to want to do this month, actually, if I remember correctly. So if you go and have a look in here, canola planting needs to be done today. We've got the grass to cut today to make some more hay for our cows. Um, we've got two harvests to go and do. There's a lot of work. And then around the edges of some of those fields, we're going to... Well, whichever one we're doing into canola. What, what's uh, the, Well, that's after the barley. Which means that we're not going to need to worry about that one. Not yet. Because the barley field was the big field. That was where we had barley. And that's going to be canola next. So we can start planting that. I'm going to want the mowers out here for doing this. I could actually... Right, I'll tell you what. Let's go to this one. This tractor here, if I can squeeze out through there. Yes, we can. This is the one. I'm going to go put this one on the trailer. Then I'm going to bring the big tractor back. And I'm going to put the seed drill on that one. And get cracking on the canola planting. Which is being done in that big field there right behind us. So... This tractor could probably pull the seed drill, but the seed drill is quite big, so it would be better if we could put our biggest tractor on that one. That way, by the time we finish doing our two lots of harvest, we will have also, or should have, finished um, doing the planting, which means that then this tractor can have the mowers on to do the mowing, because this tractor is the one that we're going to want for doing the, the, the big butterfly mowers that we've now got. Um, that's really going to need to be going on this tractor. So it would be better if we can use this one for the... if Well, it would be better if we want to use this one for doing this the drilling. We want to get that done as quickly as possible so that it frees up the tractor. And I reckon that by the time we finish doing the combining, this one will be just about finished doing the planting as well. So we get both of them done at the same time, and then we can move on to the haymaking. Um, oh, we haven't got butterfly mowers. We've just got that 
drag along. I was going to get butterfly mowers, but now I've gone and bought BGA instead, so we won't be buying butterfly mowers just yet. I'm going to take you out here. Still, I would like to have this tractor on the mowers, because this one seems to do a better job of it. Uh, and oilseed radish, grass, wheat, barley. Oh, nope, not oat. Um, canola. Canola is going into the field up here. I've got all the seed and fertilizer and everything in here that I will want, so I'm not going to need to do anything different with that. I just want to bring it over here, unfold it. I'm going to do once around the edge of this field, just to mark it out a bit, and then we'll leave the hired help to go, and we'll do the rest of the tidy up work. It is unfolded. Give me that nonsense. And we'll go and do like the rest of it once we've um, that hired help has done everything that it's going to do. Hired help can be a little bit pernickety sometimes, so if it's going to give up part way or anything like that, at least if we do an outside round, it's got a bit more of a, a bit more of an edge that it can kind of look at and maybe not get quite so upset about. We'll see. So I've done once around, and then I did two times up this side. I've just set the hired help going and it seems like we've got enough room to be able to turn around here and I'm hoping that the turnaround up that side will be absolutely fine as well. So we're going to let them carry on and do that. In the meantime, we're going to go down here and we're going to unfold the combine. The tractor is over there, so this is a really, really small field, so we're not going to have to worry too much about this one and uh, being able to offload. All we're going to want is the tractor and trailer there ready so that we can, once we finish doing the field, get rid of the grain, ready to rush on down to the next field down the bottom end, which will be simple enough. And then, of course, we're going to have the straw that we're going to come back and gather up. And then that's more bedding for the cows to be processed through and turned into valuable, valuable manure, which is going to make us an absolute fortune. My main question is, how much are we going to get? Like, is it... I'm assuming that we get the same price for electricity and stuff from both the BGAs. So I don't think that bit's going to change at all. Ooh, I know what we can do. Just that up there. Uh, I want to just go on to here. So there, electric charge, price, no sell point, maximum price, 1,049, maximum value, 1,602, uh, 1,500. But it's no value and price on there, just a max price. Methane, we can sell at the sell everything container. That is... Maximum price is 1,349. Current price is 1,361. I think we're doing pretty well with that. And we have a grand total of 10 euros worth right there. That seems pretty good, I've got to be honest. 10 euros. That's, that's not too bad for just a, a little bit of gas. All right, let's um, drop you in there. I don't know how much we're going to get in way of canola. It won't be very much. Next year we will have a lot more canola because we're going to have a much bigger field turned over to the canola and i know originally i wasn't actually planning to get another bga set up over there until like i had more money or possibly even not at all but um a few of you did say that the mini bga was really good and that i should try it and Quite frankly, it just, like, if we're putting all of the straw and stuff into the cows, it just feels like a little bit of a waste to not then be able to utilize it. And only having seven and a half thousand liters of storage in that standard BGA, that doesn't seem very good at all. Like, that, that just seems poor. That means that you're going to have to be ferrying the stuff over... Well, I don't know if it'd be every day, because I, mean, it's, I suppose it's how fast it uses it up, really, isn't it? But I, I'm not entirely certain how fast it does use it up. But the point is, we'll have to be ferrying it over a lot. Back and forth, back and forth. I don't really want to be doing that. It gets boring. 
Um, it's fine when you're doing like solo gameplay or even if I was making time naps, but doing this kind of video and then having a job where I'm having to constantly take loads of stuff over to where anywhere like that, it does get a bit tedious. I mean, I'm wondering what to do about the eggs because I'm having to carry two pallets every day. That's not a lot. And, you know, we can just chuck them down now as I found today and just sort of bulldoze them along the ground. <laughs> Pretend that we're not breaking them and just bulldoze them along the ground. It's, it's much the same as carrying them carefully and, and considerately. It just means that we can do it a little bit quicker than we otherwise would. And I feel that that is a bonus. I feel that that is a good thing. We're on 3,000 litres of canola. I reckon that we're going to get 4,500 litres out of this field. That is my guess. Let's bring you down there. I should probably pick the header up when I go around the corners, but... Four, four and a half thousand. That might be wishful thinking. I know we got one, we got a, a run up through here, but then we've only got that like tiny little triangle of stuff left, and I'm not entirely sure that that is four and a half thousand worth. Or maybe, maybe it's it's going to be a bit tight here. I think. Is Frith at all accurate with his guesswork, or is he completely 100% out and going to end up looking like a complete and total fool? I'm hoping that he won't. Because there may be consequences to that. People might laugh at me, and we can't be having that. Right, 4,200. Are we going to be within 100 litres of the guess? I said 4,500. I think we're going to be within 100 litres at least. It's going to be the lower end. Have we got 45 litres of canola in this little bit? Go on. I reckon it's going to be like 35 litres. That's what we're going to end up with. That bit right there. The very last bit. <laughs> 108 litres away from my guess. So I said 4,500. We're 108 litres away from that. I wasn't within 100 litres of the guess, which means that I've just made a complete and total fool of myself. This is embarrassing. It's, it's very embarrassing. And we'll just quietly go over here and get this one. And then we're going to... We should be all right for driving the combine down to the next field because we can go straight across the one that we've already cut, which means that we don't have to battle the traffic very much. There'll be a little bit of battling traffic over just moving into the corner of the sorghum field, but I don't think that's going to be too bad. So you do that, and then we'll check on this one. This one is doing an absolutely wonderful job, and we have our brand new seed drill here hard at work. So that field is going to be taken care of in no time. This seed drill was definitely worth the money. Okay, we have done that bit. I will now drive down to the sorghum field. i got to be honest, leaving the straw behind on the ground is fine for all of the other crops. But the sorghum one, it kind of feels a bit cheaty to me. Because the sorghum is supposed to be operated like a stripper header, and I've been told that the straw, that the home off of the sorghum is like really quite soft and almost sugary um, and if you take the whole stalks it just clogs up the combine and doesn't do anything leaving it behind a straw feels a little bit cheaty when it comes to the sorghum the rest of it is absolutely fine but I'm thinking that I should disable the straw swath for this crop and this crop alone now, if you think that I should change this, then do say so, and I will happily change back to leaving the straw. But it just, it kind of feels a bit wrong. Now, I've been told about the sorghum and that you would almost always harvest it like this because you will have real big problems with the actual stalks of the plant 
choking up the combine and jamming up and causing issues. Um, so because you would do it like this, yep, yeah, maybe you could go in afterwards and you could cut the stalks and then harvest them, but you'd have to dry them out. Um, it seems like generating straw out of this would be sort of well I'm trying to play realistically and I, I know that a lot of stuff that we're doing isn't realistic and I, I'm quite happy to accept that but generating straw out of thin air feels like a step too far for me so for that reason I'm going to chop this one now, if you feel that I'm doing this wrong and that uh, maybe I'm reading too much into it and that next time we should take the straw from the sorghum as well as the other crops, then that's fine. That's what we will do. Um, but I kind of feel like in order to achieve a balance for slightly more realistic gameplay, which I'm trying to aim for in this series, it's better for us to be doing it like this. We'll, we will turn all the others into straw because they do actually cut down to the ground, like the, or all of the others, that they do actually cut down and the uh, crop that we're harvesting, uh, you know, it's, it's all taken away. And I know for a fact that it does leave a load of stuff on the ground. So it, the, the maize, the sunflowers, all of it, it's all cut down fairly low and then there would actually be a reasonable amount of straw left behind. This one here, you can see that we're sort of spreading out a load of straw, but if we're cutting it with a stripper header, like I've been told is the standard practice for this, or cutting it really high with a standard header so that you're just taking in the seed heads and nothing else, um, you would have the material being sprayed out the back like this. It just wouldn't be large quantities of it, because obviously most of the material is left standing in stalks. One thing that you would do, though, is mulch it afterwards. That is definitely a thing that would happen. And we can do that one of two ways. We could get a mulcher and we could actually mulch this back into the ground. Or we could go over it with a cultivator. We, we wouldn't go into this, I don't believe, with a direct drill and just direct drill into this stubble. We would either plough it... Although, to be honest, ploughing with this length of material on the top, it would be difficult and it would end up making it, it, it would be quite a mess. So you would go and mulch that first, actually. Um, you could go over it with a cultivator. I think the cultivator we got is a disc harrow cultivator. Um, the plough that we've got... Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.